actually, can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that, but there is a pounding sound, and that is the sound that we're after. We're on the right track. Today we're in Kathmandu, Nepal, and we're exploring all over the city to find some very unique Sherpa and Tibetan food. This is food from the people that live right up in the Himalaya. Super interesting cuisine. We have got a bunch of hidden gems lined up to share with you. We can't all wait to get into it. The diversity of Kathmandu's food culture will blow you away. This country is home to over 100 different ethnicities, each with unique dishes to discover. This is our third video from Kathmandu and we're delving into Sherpa and Tibetan food. Join us inside a special family kitchen to watch traditional Sherpa dishes being made. Unbelievable mountain potato dumplings and potato pancakes. These are dishes you won't find outside of Nepal. We share with you a hearty Himalayan stew loaded with corn and buffalo before exploring some of the best Tibetan food in Kathmandu. We take you into a unique restaurant for homemade Tibetan blood sausage and salty tea and devour buffalo thukpa, one of Nepal's most beloved noodle dishes from a local restaurant famous for their fresh noodles. In this Kathmandu series, we're taking you into the heart of Nepali food culture, from traditional indigenous food to Nepali street food. You don't want to miss this series. Get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. So pumped for this day of filming. We are crammed onto the local bus heading to another part of the Kathmandu Valley called Bora. And this bus is awesome. We're in, packed in tight with the locals. Don't know how long it might take, maybe up to an hour, depending on the condition of the roads. But I love traveling this way. It's such an adventure. And um, getting out there and being amongst the local people, it's awesome. So we're heading to Bora, which is really famous for having a lot of Sherpa and Tibetan foods. So today's video is all um, about Sherpa and Tibetan foods. We're eating a ton of delicious local dishes. We've come to the area of Boda for this video because this is home to a lot of um, Sherpa and Tibetan people. So there's a lot of very unique food here and there's also this incredible stupa. It's said to be the biggest stupa in the world. It's uh, 43 meters high almost. But what we're looking for is a little restaurant hidden somewhere up a laneway. So we want to get right into this little lane, find a restaurant hidden somewhere up here and really get to the heart of this Tibetan and Sherpa food, which looks super interesting and super unique, totally different to other food we've had while we've been here in Kathmandu. We've done a loop of the stupa to see if we can spot the alleyway which has all the Sherpa restaurants in it and I think this is it here. So it's quite dimly lit or very dimly lit. We're squeezed in between the uh, shops, the tourist shops and I can see if, uh, maybe three or four Sherpa uh, restaurants. The Sherpa uh, food is very different to what we've shown in this series so far. Actually, can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that, but there is a pounding sound and that is the sound that we're after. We're on the right track because what that signifies is a dish that we want to try here and it's potato dumplings. But in order for them to be made, they need to be pounded into a paste. Let's head into this restaurant. I think this, maybe this is the entranceway right here. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> so this is the restaurant that we're after and oh, <laughs> Bad. Namaste. So look Danyabad. at this guy. He's putting his back into it. He's making the dish called Rildok and that's potato dumplings. So he's using this big mortar and pestle and pounding that potato dough. Wow. It's hard work, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so behind him there are stacks of mountain potatoes, the potatoes that come from high up in the mountains and then um, it just needs to get pounded for a really long time, isn't it? To make into a really smooth paste so that they can then make the potato dumplings. We've been crouched here watching Anselm Schiffer make the real dock for about 
three minutes and the ground has been shaking. He's been put so much effort into making the, the dough for the dumplings. And he said it's about two or three kgs of potatoes, right? And all that is in that mortar and pestle is just, or in the mortar is, which one's the mortar and which one's the pestle? The mortar I think is the bowl. Um, is just potato. So it's just potato being pounded until, look, it's so silky looking and very soft and sticky. Wow. Thank you for letting us watch. Yeah. Amazing. This is the bowl of real dog. Ang Sering Shifa has just put it in front of me and it's unreal. This is a really special lunch experience. This little family run restaurant is, um, is very pokey, small, uh, very low light. There's just a few tables and they just churn out these amazing special Sherpa dishes. So these are the potato dumplings, the real dog. And uh, potatoes are a very big part of the Sherpa diet. Uh, it's used in a lot of different recipes. And just look at these real dog. They're super fluffy and they're in a, a very light light broth. The real duck are cooked really simply with ginger, garlic, uh, there's spring onion, I think maybe a bit of coriander in there and turmeric, so in a very basic broth. So the potato dumplings are just that, just potato. The mountain potatoes are very important. They say that um, nothing else will do, they have to be from the mountains. And they're just so fluffy and silky looking. <laughs> Holy moly, they're amazing. Wow. Oh, wow. Mm. They are beautiful and they melt in your mouth. They, you don't even need teeth to eat these things. They're not chewy at all. They are really silky and smooth and they just dissolve. <coughs> that is nuts. They're incredible. And the soup that they're in is full of flavor. There's a bit of chili in there, so it's got a perfect level of heat. You can really taste that garlic and onion. It's very strong. Oh, but man, these real dog are incredible. And it's so unreal watching them being made. And I can see that the pounding has really created this silky texture. And the second you put it in your mouth, you understand why it's been pounded for so long because it literally just collapses. It's got a beautiful earthy potato flavour. Wow. <laughs> Done your bad. All right, so I've been watching the locals get into their real dog and they're um, sprinkling this air mung, which is like Sichuan pepper, into their bowl. Oh my gosh. The aroma is insane. It's really strong, like the strongest pepper I've ever, ever smelt. It's very aromatic, very strong and spicy. Mm. I slept a bit of soup back and it caught right in my throat. That Sichuan pepper spice, whoa, that takes it to another level. Oh, it adds a lot of heat to the bowl, but a beautiful sort of really um, gentle burn in the back of your throat. That's a really great addition. Kacha, biak butter. Amazing. Danya bad. These are incredible. So good. Now the other dish that we ordered is come the Ricky Kerr. So this again is a potato based dish and it's this beautiful Pancake, so a really big plate sized pancake and it comes with a couple of sides. This one is butter. This is yak butter So a very important thing something you find here a lot in Nepal and then a little archer This is a beautiful green sauce, which I think will have coriander a whole lot of chili And I believe it's made with buttermilk so probably yak buttermilk So that'll be nice and creamy too, but this is a bit of a race against time because the pancakes nice and hot You've got all of this butter 
and we've got to get that butter on there and let it melt all over this pancake. So let's go. Basically, let's just go for the whole hog. We'll get all of that yak butter on there and just let it start melting into the pancake. Spreading that yak butter all over there. Man, it's cold here, as you can probably tell from our huge jacket. So we had to get in very quickly, so it's already cooled down. But I've got that yak butter all golden all over there. Look at all that yak butter melted. And I'm just going to go straight on with a whole lot of this archer, just straight in the middle there and then rip into this potato pancake. Wow, it's a beautiful texture. It's got a little bit of stickiness to it. Wow, oh, it's got a potato feel, so that creaminess, that sort of sticky, whole lot of archer. Oh, man. Oh, my God. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> this is unreal. Oh, the flavor, the flavor in that archer. So the potato pancake is very soft. It is no chunkiness at all. It's super creamy. And then the butter is just this luscious layer of butter because it's a lot of it. So it's melted right through. And that archer, oh my God, it's heavenly. The flavor is incredible. It's, it's a bit creamy because of the buttermilk. It's, look at it, oh covering it and you can see there's chunky bits so there's green onion i think chili coriander so you've got some chunky bits and then some more creamy bits just coating the pancake oh man mm. oh wow wow that is good i can't say how good that is because it's too good it's unreal doesn't look like much just a very simple looking pancake but oh my god that is heavenly incredibly good and i love this little restaurant it just feels so nepalese in here we've been to nepal uh previously a number of years ago and trekked and sitting in here feels like you're up in the mountains little dark um no windows very common when you're up in the mountains this just feels exactly like that so it's taking me right back to being in the mountains but man alive this food is incredible absolutely incredible packed with flavor Danyabad. it was so delicious see you next time bye 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 <laughs> see you that was unreal, such an unbelievable experience. The flavor of that potato is still in my mouth. It's such a strong, earthy flavor. And they, that family, they were just so friendly and welcoming. That was unreal. We're gonna continue on the Sherpa food hunt. Actually, it's not really a hunt because right next door to the restaurant that we were just at, down, further down the alley, is a restaurant that serves uh, folgi, which is a Himalayan Sherpa stew. So let's pop into this little <laughs> Namaste. This is another restaurant that's reminiscent of the places that we used to sit in when we're up trekking in the mountains. The curtains are drawn so it's very dark. It's just one little uh, two light bulbs so it's very dimly lit uh, and it's just it's atmospheric. It's, it feels special sitting here and waiting for our bowl of uh, folgi. So that's that hearty winter stew that's eaten by the Sherpa people. Uh, it's predominantly made from corn and potato and we actually ordered it with buffalo. Wow, folgi time. It looks amazing. Don't you bad. <laughs> oh, whoa, this is a heaping bowl of stew. So this is the hearty uh, Sherpa stew called folgi. And it is piled high with ingredients. Look at all of it. And I think this is really going <laughs> to really fill us up. And I suppose uh, this is the perfect dish. And what we had before also uh, to demonstrate the type of food that the Sherpa people eat. It's very hearty. It's very nourishing, very satisfying. This stew is chock full of ingredients. I can see a ton of corn in there. There's slices of potato, big kidney beans. There's a buffalo meat, that brown um, meat on the top there, and also some greens. So I think maybe baby bok choy. And there's not much liquid. It's really just the ingredients are very packed full of all of those things that I listed. And 
it smells stunning. It smells very strongly of corn. What I might do is just grab a, a scoop off the top here. Hopefully it's cooled down a bit because it's piping hot. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Wow. It's hot. Mm. But packed full of flavor again. That is insane. The buffalo has a great chew to it, a beautiful flavor. Buffalo is the meat of choice here in Nepal. Very common. And the, the potato is so creamy. Oh. Oh. Super hot. Mm. Mm. This is the perfect winter dish. It's so nourishing, very satisfying and hearty. And I think it's reflective of the type of cuisine that the Sherpas need. They're living high up in the mountains. It's very cold, high altitude. The work that they're doing, just the, their daily life is quite physical. And so they need this type of food, really nourishing food, high calorie food. Mm. Mm. This is the perfect thing to be eating right now. It's cold, we've still got our big winter jackets on, but this is warming me right up from the inside. Mm. In that mouthful, I just got a little taste of Sichuan pepper. It sort of made my tongue or uh, numb and tingly. This is amazing. What an incredible laneway of Sherpa restaurant. So the two restaurants are right here that we've just been to next door to each other. And wow, that food was incredibly special. So now we're heading back out into the, into the open because this lane is so dark. You kind of wonder what's in here. It's very mysterious, even though it's a beautiful, bright blue day today, this very dark, mysterious lane. And now we're back out to the super. We're just exploring the laneways around Boda and we've heard about this local restaurant uh, which specializes in guma, which is Tibetan blood sausage. And this place is supposed to be the best place in Boda to find it. I think this is it actually right here. So it operates out of a lady's uh, front yard. So it's adjoined to her house. So let's go, <laughs> let's go and see if, it, if it's a thing. I think this is the restaurant. It's literally literally just made up of two tables, three chairs and a bed. And I think this is the lady's house. Namaste. <laughs> I'm just yelling in and seeing if anyone's around. Ah, yes. Danyabad. Can we just have a little plate? We'll sit out here. <laughs> okay, Danyabad. Guma? Wow. Okay, so this is the lady who makes the guma. Wow. So fresh. <laughs> it looks beautiful. It looks really delicious. All right, so uh, she asked me if I wanted to cut it. I said that I'd let her do the honors. So, this is a Tibetan blood sausage. It's made from buffalo uh, fat. There's obviously blood in there. Uh, it looks really squishy. So she's um, She uses intestine, obviously. So, the intestine is stuffed with. Um, fat, buffalo, blood, uh, roasted barley, I believe, and uh, it's, there's meat in there as well because it's very chunky. Wow, Danyabad. So we've got this whole guma sliced up here and she's also got a little pot of, of chili. So I think we'll be dipping our guma into the chili sauce. The lady serving us some black tea, some Tibetan, I think it's salted black tea to wash down the blood sausage with. I'm really excited to get into it. It looks great. Such a neat texture, it's quite squishy, but very meaty as well. Danyavad. Perfect. This is a neat little spot. So the lady before who was cutting up that guma, she is the master guma maker of this region. She's famous for this blood sausage and her little restaurant is neat. So it's literally just this tarp which is covering this area, hanging over a few poles. There's a few uh, chairs, couple of tables and then this bed. 
and everyone just rocks in, grabs a, a seat on this on this bed and tucks into this plate of Tibetan blood sausage. So this is the guma. I'm so excited to try it because it looks like such a great texture. So very meaty and chunky. You can see that intestine on the outside there. So she's just cut it all up. She's left us a bowl of chili sauce for dipping and she served us up a couple of uh, cups of black tea and I think it's Ah uh, yeah, it's salted black tea, so it's it's tea which is, is salty, it's got salt in it and that's quite common of Tibetan tea. Uh, if it's milky they serve it with uh, yak butter and it's salty as well. So this is really traditional Tibetan food. <laughs> Let's dive into the guma, so this is a huge pile of blood sausage and this is this is how it is served it's not that we're missing out on a meal here it shouldn't be part of it this is how this restaurant serves it so you just get a big plate of the sausage i'm gonna go for a nice middle bit and let's get some of this chili just right over it cover it man that looks fiery it's bright red that chili sauce mmm wow Mmm, wow, that is a very mild blood sausage. So it's buffalo meat and buffalo blood, but it's very mild. And what that piece of sausage had in it was a big piece of buffalo. So not a minced piece of meat, an actual chunk of meat. So a really um, lovely tender piece of meat inside there. So highly unusual for a sausage to have a whole piece of meat right inside there. Oh. Let's get that bit actually, that looks really good. Dip that in that chili sauce, not too spicy actually. Oh man. Mmm. Mmm. This is brilliant. It's so interesting. It is like no sausage I have ever eaten. Those big chunks of meat stand out a lot, but also the intestine that the is the sausage skin, so a very normal thing to have as a sausage skin all around the world, but it's very thick. Much, much thicker than you'd normally get. So normally that intestine's stretched out so it's transparent, very thin, but this is very thick. So it has a lot of texture and you get a lot more flavor from the intestine than you normally would in a sausage. I can, I can taste that. Wow, this is super interesting. Let's see how it goes with this salty tea. Ooh, hoo hoo hoo. Oh, that's a good combo. The this, this sausage itself is quite heavily salted. So then the tea, oh, that saltiness in the tea really works. That's really interesting. That Drinking that makes me think of being out on the ocean. So it's just that slight saltiness. Like say you're having a beer out on a boat and just a little bit of salt just gets on it while you're doing other things. So you get a little bit of saltiness in your mouth as you drink it. That's what that tastes like. Not too much, but just a lovely little kick of that saltiness. And this is definitely a very special environment to be eating in. So I'm sitting on the bed that Sheena mentioned now. Um, and just the place itself is so amazing. So it's just a housing a housing area so you come in their little driveway so we had to come in from here and from the road and then into this little setup of just a pretty higgledy piggledy couple of tables chairs it's unreal and serving this incredibly good blood sausage so a super interesting dish and really neat to have a tibetan blood sausage something very unique wow this day is just filled with unique incredible food from interesting um, parts of the world and, and groups of people. I love it. I was thinking I to fear a new animal. I was thinking We're wandering the streets of Boda heading to our next stop. So this is a very interesting part of town with a lot of um, Sherpa, so the Sherpa food we had earlier, and now the Tibetan food. And Tibetan food is a, is a thing that you see a lot here in Nepal. They eat a lot of this food in the day-to-day -day eating. And thukpa is what we're gonna have next. And this is a dish you'll find on almost every menu here in Nepal. It's a perhaps Tibetan origins, and this restaurant just up here is where we're having it because this place is meant to do an incredibly good thukpa and they make all their noodles on site. So that's always a complete bonus. Let's go grab some. 
as Thomas was saying, this restaurant makes their own noodles. And actually, you can see in their kitchen, um, there were some noodles just hanging up at the back there. And she's just grabbing the strands of noodles and cutting them and popping them into this big pot to boil to make the thukpa, which is the noodle soup. Wow, look, the piles of noodles. They look really bouncy and stretchy. They've been very kind and let me come into the kitchen to watch the noodles being made. So they're being made on this really incredible machine. So what she's got is this huge um, thing of dry dough and she keeps adding it to the noodles so that it's getting longer and longer and longer. It's really neat watching it go through this press and just worm its way flat. And then once the noodles are all cut, they're being hung and dried over here to then get put straight in the boiling water and cooked. But wow. These are incredible. <laughs> Thank you, mate. They're now making the noodles. So the same machine that was making the dough has now got a sort of an attachment on it to make the noodles. And so she's making them right now and laying them onto these wooden poles so they can then be hung on this rack here before they get put into the into the boiling water to be cooked. But this is unreal, watching these super fresh noodles being prepared. We've got a gigantic bowl of buffalo thukpa in front of us and these noodles don't get any fresher. They're literally being made about five meters away. They're a wheat noodle and just look at how bouncy and sort of glossy they look. So they're wallowing in a bowl of broth and there's some baby bok choy and also a ton of this buffalo mince, so buff kima. I'm going to take a big spoonful of this broth and just see what it tastes like. Mm, it's a very mild, subtle, sort of meat flavoured broth. So what I'm going to do is add a whole dollop of this uh, chilli oil. So tons of chilli and also some roasted sesame seeds in there. And I think it's going to ramp this bowl of noodles up. So let's just chuck a whole lot of that heat into that bowl. And let's just give it a big old mix. And I've got to get into these noodles. They look so good. It was amazing watching them getting made. Mm. Mm. Oh, those noodles have a beautiful flavor. They have the right amount of chew and bounce. They're amazing. I want to go for a bite of noodles and then chase it with some broth and buff. Mmm. 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 Mm. Mm. Beautiful. The noodles are just unreal. Really bouncy. They have a great texture, a lot of flavour. And then adding that uh, chili oil really ramped it up. It's given it another depth of flavour. That buffalo mince is great. Quite lean. Mmm. That broth is wonderful now. It's, it started off as being very mild in flavour, just a very basic sort of uh, bone broth. And then adding that chilli oil and then that roasted sesame flavour is coming through it now too. Wow. Thukpa is one of those dishes that you eat a lot when you're here in Nepal, especially if you're trekking. We ate this so often when we were trekking up to Everest Space Camp, but I've never eaten a thukpa like this before. The noodles are just sensational. They are such a highlight. And actually having them being made just metres away, you know that you've got a quality thing going on. Mmm. Mmm. Again, it's so satisfying, it's hearty, it's warming, it is just an epic bowl of noodles. I'm not sure if there's anyone around. See from there, look. There's nothing.